All right, hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Molly and I've been with Whole Earth Provision Company for about 14 years. If you're a longtime customer, you might remember me from the Mockingbird store in Dallas or the Westgate store in Austin. But for the last nine years, I've been the sportswear buyer. So I'm not a scientist or a dermatologist, but what I am is an expert on fabric and clothing. I love to spend time in the sun. I don't know about you, but it's really one of my favorite things to do, whether I'm in my backyard, in my hammock, or gardening, going on hikes, spending time on the water. It's really one of the best ways that you can spend your time. There's something just mood heightening about spending your time in the sun. So I don't want it to be a fear mongering thing. I don't want to scare you. What I want to do is be able to give you some tools that you are then able to use to protect yourself while enjoying your life to the fullest. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this little mini clinic is that something is better than nothing. A little bit can go a long way. So you don't, don't feel like you need to only buy UPF 50 plus products. That's the only way it's gonna protect you. That's not true. Even this little lightweight white shirt that I'm wearing, lightweight cotton, is still gonna prevent about 90% of UV light from reaching my skin. And it only gets better from there with some of these amazing products that we have. So today we're gonna talk about SPF versus UPF, UVA and UVB light, some heightening risk factors that you might incur encounter, and ways to protect yourself with some of these great products. So UPF, so I'm sure you've heard of SPF, that's what you find in sunscreen. UPF is how we measure clothing and accessories, and it stands for ultraviolet protection factor. So with, this is talking about the amount of UV radiation that penetrates through the fabric and actually reaches your skin. SPF is sun protection factor, and it measures the amount of time that it protects your skin before your skin reddens. So that's why reapplying sunscreen is so important. Some people think they can put it on in the morning and then they can forget about it, and that's Again, better than nothing, right? Much better than doing nothing, but it's important to make sure you're reapplying your sunscreen. Whereas UPF, ultraviolet protection factor, is something that'll last all day long, doesn't decrease over time. So going a little bit deeper into UPF, so it's the amount of UV radiation that the fabric allows to reach your skin. So an item with UPF 50 blocks 98% of the ultraviolet radiation and only 2% of that reaches your skin. Now, SPF usually only measures UVB light, which is why it's important to look for a broad spectrum sunscreen or cosmetic products. Broad spectrum will block both UVB and UVA light. So I go over this because it's important to know what you're up against to be able to protect yourself accordingly. Um, UVA and UVB are different, but they can both be damaging to your skin and to your eyes. Exposure to UVA and UVB, right? If I just say it that way, it doesn't sound too bad. It's kind of innocuous. That's why I keep using the word radiation to really hit home how important it is to be, protect yourself. Some damage is seen quickly, and other damage might take a long time for you to know that it's there. So let's talk about that a little bit. UVB light is actually more topical, and that's what's gonna cause the reddening, the burns, the freckles, whereas the UVA light is what's going to cause melanomas, wrinkling, and other long-term damage. Anyone who spends a lot of time outside can probably relate to getting a sunburn, but not everybody is super proactive about preventing both types of UV radiation. So let's talk about the difference again between UVA and UVB. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. We're gonna go on a little thought experiment here. It's a little bit easier to visualize these if we pretend like UVA and UVB light are objects being thrown by the sun, okay? So big thanks to Reed Harper with Sunday Afternoons for sharing this mnemonic, mnemonic device with me. Um, I just find it really easy to visualize and communicate. So UVA, we're gonna say is like an arrow, and UVB is like a bouncy ball. Um, in these examples, we'll say the skin is like a pane of glass, right? So, with UVB light, if you throw a bouncy ball at a pane of glass, 
it'll rattle the glass, it maybe leaves a mark or some streaking. Um, these are, these type of rays are not as deeply penetrating. So they can be blocked by things like cloud cover, foliage, shade. Um, there's a lot of different ways to block these UVB light. Um, but this is, yeah, what causes a sunburn and it generally affects the top layer of your skin. So then we move over to UVA light, the arrow, that's gonna go right through that pane of glass. So UVA light goes through tree canopy, clothing, clouds. It just goes right through. Uh, and this is the damage that's not as immediately seen, um, but can be more damaging over time. So again, UVA, arrow, deep penetrating, UVB, bouncy ball, topical damage. So what do we do? We block the rays with whatever we can. A lot of what we're gonna talk about today is going to come down to personal preference and you get to decide what is best for you. Obviously, sunscreen and UPF clothing and accessories are some of the best ways to block, but even things like an umbrella, staying in the shade under the trees, making sure that you're not in the direct sunlight for too long, that you're taking breaks going inside. Um, there's lots of different things that you can use. So again, broad spectrum sunscreen. I'm just gonna keep hitting that home because that's something a lot of people don't know about. UVA and UVB is protected against the broad spectrum. Um, same thing within cosmetics as well. If you're looking for that SPF protection, make sure it's broad spectrum. And yeah, the SPF, a lot of people don't realize that it's associated with time, the amount of time it takes for your skin to redden. Um, SPF 40 will take approximately 40 minutes to redden skin if used correctly. Again, everyone's a little bit different. It depends on you know the melanin in your skin already, but it's just sort of a, a nice rule of thumb to remind you to keep reapplying that sunscreen. So now let's talk a little bit more about UPF. UPF comes in a lot of different ratings. You'll see the 50 plus, which like I said earlier, is the most protection that the rating organizations will give. Um, but really, a lot of things have sun protection that you might not even realize. So UPF 10 prevents about, or only allows about one tenth of the UV light to penetrate through the fabric and hit the skin. So again, I'm wearing this really lightweight cotton shirt um, and what this gives me is about a 10 UPF. So only 10% of the UV light is coming through your lightweight t-shirt. If it's wet, that goes down to about a three. So keep, keep in mind that there are some factors involved in that, but you're still getting some protection. This is why, you know, if you're out in the sun, you'll get sort of the, the farmer's tan with your t-shirt. A lot of light is being absorbed locked and bounced back by whatever clothing that you're wearing. A UPF 20 lets in 1 20th or 0 0.05 of the light. So 95% of UV is blocked. This is something like a heavy or tightly woven cotton t-shirt in a dark color. UPF 30 prevents 96.77% of the UV light. This could be like a tightly woven wool shirt. UPF 40, 97.5% of UV is blocked. This is like a very tightly woven fabric or especially treated fabric. And then we get to our UPF 50, 50 plus. This is only letting in 0.02% of the light. 98% is blocked. This is a thick or specially treated, specially manufactured item. So a thick denim shirt will actually have a UPF of 50 plus but it's not something that you're going to want to wear all summer long, right? So there's definitely some give and take here. Um, you know, Reed Harper gave me the example of like a velvet suit. It's going to block the light, <laughs> okay? But what we want is to be comfortable and feel good when we're having fun out in the sun. So each time that UPF climbs, you're noticing the fabric is getting thicker. It's more densely woven. It's blocking more of that sunlight. So how do we find the right items that are gonna keep us cool and comfortable once it becomes 100 degrees outside? Well, we have a lot of great options for you. There are UPF-specific lightweight woven and knit items. 
that are gonna feel wonderful while still blocking a lot of that light. And also you know, remember that spending time in the sun can be exhausting, so you don't wanna overheat by wearing your rain jacket as some protection, okay? So choosing something protective and lightweight is essential for staying comfortable in hot weather. And how you choose to protect yourself is up to you. There's a lot of options. You might like a woven, you might like a knit, you might go with a really big hat that has a good three inch wide brim, or you might prefer a baseball cap. Something is better than nothing. Um, I really like wearing some protective clothing when I'm out in the sun because that way I don't have to worry about the time that it's been since the last time I reapplied sunscreen. But that said, I'll always wear sunscreen on my face and on my hands. So keep that in mind as you're planning your outfit for your day ahead. Um, UPF clothing, you know, it's not 100% effective, but it lessens the exposure and provides a solution for being outside longer, safer, and more comfortably. Like I mentioned earlier, shade is your friend. Make sure that you're paying attention to when you're in direct sunlight and when you can take some relief in the shade. Um, again, you know, it's not perfect. If you can see, there is sunlight, right? If it's not pitch black, some sunlight is getting through. So just keep that in mind that we wanna make sure we're layering protection. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about are some factors to keep in mind that will increase your risk of sun damage. So the first one is if you're in the water, the sand, or the snow. 80% of the UV light bounces off of these surfaces and so you'll get hit by them a second time. So if you're in the snow, on the water, at the beach, make sure you're really paying attention to sun protection and also that it's not all just coming vertically, right? I mean a hat is wonderful, I always wear a hat if I'm going to be in direct sunlight, but don't forget it's going to be bouncing up at you as well, so make sure you're wearing sunscreen. Altitude. UV light intensifies when we're higher up in altitude, so when you're skiing and hiking, really pay attention to your protection. Um, same with equatorial regions. That was something that I didn't know until I visited Tulum, Mexico with my mother, and we went on about a 15 minute walk to go get some lunch, and I was like, oh, 15 minutes, I'll be fine, I don't need sunscreen. I did, my skin was noticeably darker after that 15 minute walk. So equatorial regions, altitude, snow, water, sand, and then also a lot of people may not realize certain medications can actually increase sun sensitivity, like acne treatments, antihistamines, antibiotics, certain anti-inflammatory medications, and even some herbal supplements. So keep an eye on that. Um, and then also, yeah, just be aware that even if it's a cloudy day, the UVA light is penetrating through those clouds, so make sure you're protecting yourself. Um, also, it's worth mentioning people with darker skin tones who may not show signs of burning can still get skin cancer, so it's important for them to protect themselves as well. This one maybe seems like a little bit of a no-brainer, but it's worth mentioning. The more skin that you're covering is better. A long sleeve shirt is better than a short sleeve shirt. Pants are better than shorts. It's just going to protect all of your skin. So let's talk about some other specifics. Hats are great. I always, always, always wear a hat if I'm going to be out in the direct sunlight. We recommend a three inch brim and a tightly woven fabric. Um, although I personally really like straw hats as well, I just feel like there is a lot more breathability and I'm less likely to overheat when I'm wearing a straw hat. But even like this great Tilly hat here has a mesh topper that's going to give you that airflow to keep you cooler when it's warm outside. Um, and really, a baseball cap is better than nothing, uh, especially if you have something with a hood, then a baseball cap is a great option because you're protecting the back side of your head with your hood. Another great option is a buff. So this is a great piece of fabric that's just a circular piece of fabric. It's got a high UPF rating and this can be used as a hat, as a neck gaiter, as a bandana, as a headband. I mean really in a pinch you can put it on your baby. Like there's a lot of great things. It's a super duper versatile item. Sunglasses are also really important. 
Sunglasses use filters and films to block UV light, and we recommend close-fitting wraparound glasses to provide the best, whoop, caught it, the best protection, right? Um, I also, again, you know, we make choices and we figure out what's best for us. I really like sort of just a basic sunglass, but as you can see, it is allowing light to get in through different sides of my face, whereas the wraparound glasses create a tight barrier that's not allowing the sun to get around. Um, sunglasses protect the skin of your eyelids as well as actually can prevent cataracts. So sunglasses are useful for a lot of different reasons. Um, polarized glasses are really great. A lot of sunglasses protect the vertical light that's coming from the sun, but polarized glasses prevent that glare, that bounce back. It also will stop that UV radiation coming from, again, if you're gonna be on the water, snow, or sand. So clothing, my area of expertise. Um, there's a lot of great things to say about clothing and I'm starting to run out of time, so I'm gonna go a little bit faster. According to the Skin Cancer Foundation, clothing is the best way to protect your skin because it doesn't wear off. Clothing still leaves some skin exposed, so sunscreen is still important, especially if you're washing your hands a lot, like we all are these days. Remember to reapply sunscreen to your hands. Factors for sun protective clothing, okay? Color. A dark or bright color is going to reflect more light than a light color. Construction. So we're talking about the fabric weave or knit and the denser the fabric is, the better it's protecting. So a great thing that you can do is just take the fabric, hold it up to some light, and if you see a lot of light coming through, it's not as protective as if you're blocking the light with the fabric. Coverage, again, it's a no-brainer. Having things like this long sleeve hoodie also has a little thumb loop, which will protect your palm, or you know, the back of your hand and your palm. Just make sure you're covering yourself. And then content is super duper important. That's like the fabric type. So shiny polyesters and nylon reflect a lot of the UV light, which prevents it from getting to your skin. There's also some chemical UV absorber, absorbers that help provide protection. And one of the, the trends that we're seeing here at Whole Earth is bamboo. So it's still a pretty new thing, but scientists are showing that UV, that bamboo has UV protection. It's partially due to the denseness of the fiber and the high fiber count in the knits and weaves. The last thing I wanna mention about selecting clothing is fit. So a loose fitting garment is gonna be better, especially if you're gonna be doing something like rowing, running, you know, if you're really moving your body, some stretch is great, but again, hold it up to the light and stretch it a little bit and see how much of that light is getting through. And really, that's about it. I brought a bunch of products here. Um, we're running out of time, but just know we have great items for men, women, children. Uh, we have knit sun protection. There's woven sun protection. Not everything is nerdy. This lovely shirt by Royal Robins, you could wear it to the office, but it still has a wonderful UPF factor, as well as like some great little details, like a little hidden zipper pocket. Um, the Soul Patrol shirt from Patagonia has a great little feature where you can roll up the collar double so you get your full neck protected. Um, brands like Mountain Khakis, Howler Brothers, Task Performance, Ex Officio, Patagonia, all have great stuff. And of course, shorts are wonderful, but we have some really great lightweight, breathable pants that'll protect your whole leg. So thank you very much for joining us today and learning a little bit about sun protection.